Greetings and salutations, folks. My name is Nick, and welcome back to Coffee Talk, episode two, Hibiscus and Butterfly, where it seems as though there's something mysterious going on at uh, at Coffee Talk. Um, there have been s several orders that Barista has made that have somehow become different orders on their way from the brewing station to the customer. And then there's this. There's something missing from the drawer. What is causing something to go missing? Is it something like a thief breaking in in the night? Is it something like um, Amanda, who seems to be able to come in without being noticed? Or is there something else going on? Is there like a ghost? Is there a haunting at the coffee top? Where I believe, like we've seen all these uh, supernatural characters. We've seen um, werewolves and banshees and vampires, but no ghosts yet. N Nico Mimis. So I'm wondering if there's a ghost, and two, I'm wondering if that ghost is related to the lighter, um, which has been described several times as having a kind of like strange aura about it. But for now, let us check to Marichil. We've met all of the characters, so I don't have to... Oh, never mind. Bailey's has not shown up yet. I'm going to have to come up with a voice for Bailey's. Hmm. I guess that would be the last character. Which is a little bit odd. It's like you, you, you've met the cast... Achievement has been acquired. And yet, we haven't actually met everybody. Let's see. Aqua. She is... Soft, high-pitched. It's sometimes scary how so many things come into factor as you make a decision. It shouldn't be that hard, right? Well, that's the thing. With contract work... There's so many legal loopholes that they're that they're trying to exploit her on. I have tons to think about every day. Oh, Lucas, what was I what was I telling Rachel about vague tweets? Like how to make your timeline more fun? Okay, you win this round, Lucas. I could really use a good cup of tea right now. That is, I, 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 every time I do Myrtle's voice, I keep thinking that it's not actually a half bad, like generic Jodie Foster or generic Helen Hunt. N not half bad on that, on that angle. Bad traffic at Yale Street. Avoid. There is something missing from the drawer. Did I misplace it? Looks like bad weather again tonight. What is missing from the drawer? So we've got... Oh, what's missing is the... Uh... Is Lucas's stuff. Because we never got to give Lucas's stuff to, uh... Riona. Like, I guess now it's basically saying, hey, this stuff is not important from now on. I still have the lighter, the employee badge, and the agent card. Looks like bad weather again tonight. Let's hope it doesn't bring bad tidings. I don't know. I think it's a very nice color scheme. Well, I think it's lacking something. No, no, that's the wrong voice for Bailey's. Um, for the last, let's see, he is uh, Elvin. It's too dainty. 
dainty. Now that's, I already gave that voice to Mr. Hyde. What have I got left in my tank? Dainty? What would you like then? Red, black, and purple? Now that's still Mr. Hyde. What would you like then? Red, black, and purple? Now that, that sounds weird, serial killer. What would you like then? Red, black, and purple? That sounds New York. We're just going to have to settle with that. That would be the worst. Okay then, why not? But you have to commit to it. No take backs this time. Bay. Bay. I don't know. Maybe. Let's take a break from the topic. I only have time for a quick drink before I go back to work. And it's not like we're going to decide now, anyway. Hmm. You know, he's the only person who's shown up wearing a plaid shirt. And yet I've given everybody else southern accents. Do I have an English accent in me? Maybe that's the problem. How are we supposed to plan this wet- I don't even have it. I don't have a good English accent. How are we supposed to plan this wedding? If we keep postponing every chance we need to make. I'll just do a bad English accent and go with that. And maybe it'll improve over time. Hey, Barista, what do you think? Pale green, lilac, and daffodil yellow, or red, black, and purple? Hey, don't put Barista on the spot. No, it's quite alright, it's just that I wouldn't know. This is your wedding. Your opinions matter, not mine. Mmm... Lua does not, is not happy that we dodged the question. Trouble is, we don't know what our opinions are. And when we think we do, we change our mind. I still don't have Bailey's down. That's why I haven't written down anything for Bailey's. I mean, I could always just cop out and have him do Sean Connery. Just Sean Connery for, uh, for him. It would be a cop-out. Like, and when we think we do, we change our mind. That would be a huge cop-out. Let me think. Okay, uh, uh, how about this? We're gonna do the opposite of Myrtle. So, sl slightly deeper tug on the right of the mouth. And hopefully that creates a different sound and we're just going to stick with it. And when we do, we change our mind. A little bit of Matthew McConaughey there. It's like the centerpieces. Yeah, a little, little bit of Matthew McConaughey there with the all right, all right, all right. Oh, please, can we not talk about that now? I really thought we agreed on the cute cottagecore ones. The ones you spotted on Tomato Chill. I mean, they were your pick in the first place. They were, but they were also too expensive. We have to be realistic. But weddings in general are expensive. Okay. Just because weddings in general are expensive does not mean your wedding has to be expensive. Like, are you going to remember your cottage core decorations five to ten years from now? Or are you going to remember the stress you had because you made you a wedding that was far too expensive? Especially when you want, want to have 200 guests. That's a low blow. 
I can't just disinvite my extended family. Also, 200 guests. That is an expensive wedding by itself. You can keep your fa your extended family, but you don't need the expensive cottage court. The key word is extended. Do you even know half these people? That's not the issue. If I invite one of them, I have to invite them all. <laughs> I'm not even married in that topic is, or uh, I'm not even engaged in that topic has already cropped up in family circles. It's like the, it's like the domino effect. Besides, they'll be paying for part of the wedding. I still don't think they should. I can pull my weight. If we have to choose, I'd rather we have the beautiful things you like. Even if it means we have fewer guests. Well, if my family's not chipping in, we might not be able to afford either. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I don't want our wedding to be j to just be a random meal with a bunch of people we're not even that close to. And I said I'll make sure we can afford a dream wedding. Or die trying, I don't want you to... Oh, thanks for the interruption. Saved by the bell. That's work, I really can't linger. I think I'll have that drink now, barista. Of course, what can I get you? Something that will keep me awake. I still have work to do and my head hurts. So I guess strong coffee would be good. And with a nice spicy kick, please. Any preference on the spicy kick? No, any strong coffee with spice will do. Okay, we are going to save our game because we are tired of brewing the wrong coffee because people give us vague directions. So we want coffee, coffee, And here, here's the thing, like there's no designation for what is spicy. Ginger? Is ginger going to add spice? Or is cinnamon going to add the kick? Let's try ginger. And if it doesn't work... Ah, Jaheb to Brook. Of course. And that seemed to have worked. Excellent. Is that... What language is that? Is that French again? Alright, let's go to... Uh, French to English again. I'm guessing that's French. Votre... Ame est un paysage. I've never taken a French class in my life. Choicey. Votre ame est un paysage choisi. Exactly, I said the exact same thing. Your soul is a chosen landscape. All right. And what did I make? Ginger presides over the ground coffee at the bottom of the cup, originally from Indonesia. An Indonesian developing developing studio introducing their coffees to the rest of the world via coffee talk and a jahat to brook for the lady oh an oldie goodie mm, perfect i can feel myself relaxing already <laughs> what you're weird. That thing doesn't smell relaxing to me at all. You're weird. I guess we're both weird. 
And then does the astronaut walk into the bar to really emphasize the weirdness? That we are. Nope, it's just Mr. Hyde. My lovely weirdo. My perfect misfit. This is so much better. It really is. Have I mentioned I love your smile? Never enough? Oh, disgusting. I'm going to need something real spicy to wash this down. And I'd love to serve it to you, Hyde. If Bailey's doesn't want to order, that is. Hyde, sorry, didn't hear you come in. Yeah, I know. You were too busy doing whatever you were doing. Hey, Hyde. Go ahead, get yourself a drink. I can wait. I'll stick here for a while anyway until Lua properly gets off work. All right, then. Did you hear me, barista? Spicy is the name of the game. Any preference on the spice or the base? Nope, just make sure it's got a spicy kick of something, then double it. Oh my gosh. Save our game. So, now here's the, here's the thing. I've said before that I'm, I'm not going to just go to a list to uh, find out what the best answer is. So is this any better than just going to a list? I would argue very, 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 very slightly better. It's like... It's like that, uh, that clip from um, the Mickey Mouse Christmas Carol when they slice off... Uh, a slice of ham and the ham is so thin that it's translucent it's like that's pretty much the difference between looking up a list and scum loading uh scum saving my way to victory um but at the very least this does involve some degree of experimentation of trying to understand the systems like what does he mean Like, he wants spicy, but there is no measure of what is spicy. So, coffee, probably not. Green tea, probably not. Tea, maybe. Blue pea tea, I have no base for a lot of these things. Hibiscus, we've tried hibiscus before. How about hibiscus and two ginger? A Zobo. That seems to have worked. Bloodish Red. The perfect drink to quench immortal thirsts. Old enough, yet still seeking the truth and purpose of life. Let's look at this Zobo. A traditional Nigerian drink with an invigorating, invigorating ginger kick, supported by cloves and pineapple. Hmm. I felt up for a challenge, so try this. If you don't like hibiscus in this, you never will. Hmm. Let's see if you cracked the hide code. Well, this is kind of troublesome, Barista. You know me a little too well. Ah, so I take it this works for you. This is a perfectly executed Zobo if I ever tasted one. Glad to see you've made good use of your ginger resupply. So you knew I couldn't get it right last time. What a jerk. Heh. <laughs> Forgive an old man his old man jokes. Anyhow, this is the only acceptable way to drink hibiscus. I used to have a friend in Lagos who made me zobo like this every time I visited. She lived near the harbor. We would sit down and drink it and watch the boats float by. That sounds lovely. She was a good friend. 
she isn't anymore? Heh. <laughs> when you've got a vampire's lifespan, friends come and go. That's sad. You get used to it. That's also sad. This isn't where you say something about enjoying yet each moment even more, or grief bring, being the price you pay for love. I'm afraid it's a lot more mundane than that. Some things you forget, and for others you just get better at moving on. Anyway, speaking of enjoying the moment, your family troubles have sorted themselves out, yes? Dad just found a missing photo album of my childhood, and I can only wish you could see how cute I am as a kitten. I mean, you have social media. Still on the marriage track? Yeah, we are. We definitely are. Huh. Not getting too bored? Not really. Turns out planning a wedding is, well... Suitably entertaining. That's one way of putting it. Can't wait to be at the marriage stage of it, to be honest. Could you sound any less enthusiastic? Hey! There they go again. Good to see that some things don't change. And such a dramatic backdrop, too. You should start serving popcorn, barista! I'd be more enthusiastic if we didn't fight about it every single time. No, I'm not engaging with this right now. I've got to go to work anyway. Right. And I'm gonna have a drink. Bye, Barista. Bye, Hyde. See ya! Ah. What can I make you, Mr. Baileys? I think... Something warm, sweet, and comforting, please. A hot chocolate, perhaps? Yes, chocolate with honey and milk could work. Oh. Thank you for specifying ingredients, but I'm still going to save my game nonetheless. That was Choco Powder with honey and milk. A Chacobi Maruku. That sounds fancy. There we go, a Chacobi Maruku for you. Freelance designer and number one pumpkin spice fan. Sweet, nourishing, healthy chocolate perfect this feels so good barista it means a lot that you're always looking out for all of us on a miserable night like this it's heartwarming but of course you're our valued customers I hope Lua didn't get too soaked you do care a lot about her. Of course I do. Then why all the fighting? You tell me. This wedding is bringing out the worst in us. Since we sorted out the situation with my family. Oh, you mean since you cut them off? Yeah, since I stopped talking to their judgmental faces. Lou and I haven't fought about anything. Until now. Every time we try to organize this thing, it's like we become different people. Hmm. Let me ask you something. Go ahead. What do you want from this wedding? Hmm. That's the thing. When, it, when you're doing something, anything, collaboration of any kind with other people, it's always good to know what your expectations are up front. How do you mean? It's not complicated. 
I'm just asking what you want. If you close your eyes and picture the day, what do you want to see? What do you see? Honestly, I have no clue. I know Lua is there, but that's about it. That's not a bad start, in truth. But if you don't have specific expectations, why don't you just let her do what she wants? <laughs> you make it sound so easy. I want her to have what she wants. That's exactly what I've been trying to achieve. I've been picking up on everything she's liking on Tomato Chill, every wedding picture she's pinning online, all the places she finds cool, all the fashion designers she follows. She, design, she deserves to have all that, to have a special day. But every time I make a suggestion, she won't hear of it. She says it's too much, too expensive, too this, too that. Is that so? Is it too much, too expensive? That's not the point. I don't want her to have a shabby wedding. Just because I'm estranged from my family, I want her to have what she wants, what she deserves. A proper princess wedding. Okay, here's the thing though. Is It kind of sounds like Bailey's is pushing these uh, highfalutin expensive items on her. Like he's not, like she says that, like she's saying what she wants. And then he's like, but do you want the really expensive option? And she's like, no, I, uh, this is what I want. And he's like, but what about this other option that's different from what you want? You are remarkably presumptuous young man, Mr. Hyde. Now nah, that's all right. I know Hyde helped Lua back in the day. If he's got something to say, I want to hear it. Good, because I was going to say it whether you like it or not. You're sitting here going on about everything Lua should want, as if you could know what's in someone else's heart. Even when you love someone, no, especially when you love someone, you should never presume to know what they need. Lua is the only one who could tell what Lua wants. But that's exactly the problem. When I ask her, she always says she doesn't know. Then give her time to figure it out. It's not going to help if you pressure her with a thousand suggestions a minute. Or if you try to force her into some sort of princess wedding. Just to make you feel good about yourself. Yeah, Bailey's problem is pretty straightforward, I would, I would imagine. But what if it takes so long that we reach old age and we're still not married? If you reach old age and you're still together, married or not, I think that counts as a win. I'm with Hyde on this one. And since we're talking about taking some time, you should also use that time to figure out what you want. Otherwise, the best you'll get is a wedding based on your skewed idea of what Lua's wedding should be. That sounds pretty sad to me. Do you know what's kind of sad? Um, I remember reading a comic where somebody, the, the artist of the comic, was mentioning how boring phone designs have kind of become. And you, like, you look at m older phones, uh, flip phones, Blackberries, like those had more design to them. And now every phone these days is just a rectangle with a screen, which is very functional. It means that everything that you make for the phone is uh, functional for every version of that phone. But visually, from a design perspective, like, those two phones might as well be the same sprite. Just recolored. Well, that wasn't pleasant to hear, Bailey's. But it also wasn't wrong. Give her time and figure out what I want, huh? Sounds so simple. Should have thought about that before, I guess. You're not bad at this tough love thing, are you, Hyde? Heh. <laughs> Perhaps I should consider a career in couples counseling. That doesn't sound nearly as much fun as modeling, doesn't it? Modeling gets old after a while. I thought you were having a good time in LA. I was, until I wasn't. I'm moving to Seattle, in fact. I kept my contract with the agency just in case, but there aren't many modeling jobs to be had here. Really? What are you going to do then? Go back to my Mafia Dwarf Buddies, of course. Come on, I'm obviously kidding. Are you? Are you? 
Phew. I wouldn't go back to them. I'd go back to be ch being chased by them. Besides, I checked in on them, and everyone I used to find entertaining has retired now. Meanwhile, their grandkids manage the whole enterprise, like it's some sort of startup. Are we talking- are we seriously talking about the Mafia right now? That's for me to know, and you- for you to wonder about. Mr. Hyde likes to play a little... Yeah, <laughs> guilty as charged. I can't help it. When I see an earnest face, I have to tease it. I'll take that as a compliment. But also, what's wrong with managing things like a startup? That sounds like a pretty efficient approach, right? You young people. Impatient in business like you're impatient in love. Efficiency isn't everything. I have all the time in the world. I don't care if things are done fast. I want them done right. Maybe you should go into slow fashion or fine arts. If you paint with oils, that'll take some proper time. Heh. <laughs> fine arts were the first thing I got good at a few centuries ago, but my style isn't trendy nowadays. I mean, here's the thing though. Trends change. By the minute. Too much curioscuro lighting. Uh, I've improved on your design a little bit. Add some curioscuro shading. And putting blue in skin tones isn't novel anymore. Also, bonus points if you know the reference. If you're insinuating that you're Rembrandt. <laughs> If my Mafia buddies find out, I'll be in trouble. You're always joking around, Hyde. But for all that, you don't sugarcoat your advice. You're a pretty good listener. I hope you also have people who listen to you. I'm moving here to be closer to them. What was that? Nothing. I believe your phone's ringing. Ah, it's Lua. She's done with work for the day, finally. In a hurry to leave here, Mr. Bailey's? <laughs> no, not at all. But I am looking forward to going home. And keeping bickering? Nah, I don't think so. I had an epiphany just now. Must be something in the drink. I'm gonna leave the topic alone for a little while. Good elf. Enjoy your night then. I think I will. Thanks, thanks Hyde. And thanks, Barista. Of course. Have a good night, Mr. Bailey's. Mr. Hyde, what was that about the Mafia and modeling and fine arts? Are you genuinely considering a career change? All I'm considering right now is whether my car got nicked. I know old man Georgie said the area is safe, and it's a bit of a pile of junk. But it's a pile of junk with sentimental value. I sense a story. It's quite a story indeed, but I'll make it short because it's getting pretty late. I got this car many moons ago, back when Gala was my bodyguard. I had been stuck in Seattle for a while, working day in and day out, and at some point I decided that I needed a proper break. But you know Gala, he's a bit of a stickler for the rules. There was no way I could have a night out in the middle of a big job, not on his watch. So you slipped his watch. <laughs> you know me well, Barista. Some friends and I, we decided to get together. I was to provide the ride, they provided the entertainment. I did the usual thing. I waited until Gala was sound asleep, and then I left a pile of pillows under the divet, hide-shaped, and I snuck out of the hotel room. There was only one problem. Gala was my chauffeur as well. He had your car keys. He had my car keys and I wasn't about to poke the bear wolf. So I went to the nearest dealership and got the cheapest card I could find. I only intended to keep it for the night, you see. I'll spare you the details, but my friends and I, we drove to a lovely spot with a view. For the sort of action which I admit might appear ambiguous from the outside, but to me was very enjoyable indeed. We were right in the thick of it when suddenly we hear a tap on the window. Let me guess, that was Gala? The wolf himself. He peers inside, then he starts banging on the door so hard the car is shaking. We all just kind of freeze, and then 
He says, how dare you kidnap Mr. Hyde? Opens the door and tosses my dates outside. Mr. Hyde, you're not winding me up, are you? Oh, barista, I wish. Sorry, it still sends me into a fit just to think about it. His he princess carried me out of the car, if you can believe that. That's a conscientious bodyguard if I ever heard one. Right? Truly earning his yearly bonus. I didn't even have the chance to explain the situation. At least not until he removed my gag. Well. Gala act like he was angry, but in reality he was mortified. If not as mortified as my dates, whom I had to pick out, whom I had to pick out of the grass. Poor Gala. <sighs> Barista, I see where your allegiance lies. Personally, I say poor me. I never saw those lovely friends again after that fiasco, but I couldn't be angry at Gala even. In fact, I found his chivalry rather charming. He didn't seem to find my antics quite as charming though. He had woken up, hadn't found me, and was already suspecting the worst. And that was before he discovered me in a strange car in the middle of nowhere in a compromising position. I think he was truly terrified on my account, so he stopped talking to me for a few weeks. That doesn't sound... unfair. I suppose it wasn't. He also wouldn't give me my car keys back. I got stuck with this old thing you can see outside. And the worst of it is, if you can believe it, I decided as a grand gesture to chauffeur him around in it. He stopped sulking really quickly after that. I suspect he wasn't a huge fan of my driving. Anyhow, I decided to keep the car in the end for whatever reason. My car collection has had some serious turnover, but this one isn't going anywhere. I must have replaced everything inside it a dozen times over, and it's very banged up. But I guess I've grown fond of it by now. We're both a little stuck in time, this car and I. You're rather more sentimental than I thought, Mr. Hyde. Sentimental, hmm? That's what you took away from that story? But I suppose you're right. Good thing it's only us here. I can plausibly deny this conversation ever took place. Still, the rain has stopped, and this is my cue to go, before I lose all my remaining cred. I hope the car is safe and sound. So do I. And Barista? Yes? Nah, nothing. Have a good night. Good night, Mr. Hyde. and a safe journey home. And thus the end of Sunday. Monday, September 25th, 2023. First wave of visa applications to Europe, rejected for failure to include passport signatures. Hmm. The rise and fall of Weirdstein box offices, a brief history. A replacement for uh, Harvey Weinstein. Sold out, replica astronaut suits experience an extreme increase in sales. Hmm. All right, well, let's find out what happens on Monday next time. For now, though, got any suggestions for someone to play next? Leave it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourselves a good night.